we're going to move on to our talk. Before we do that, we'd like to pray for Sister Yoli. So our right hands in the air, left hands over our heart. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father God, we ask that today that you come into each and every one of our hearts and open them up and allow Sister Yoli to speak the words that you want her to speak. Lord. Allow them to penetrate our heart. But most, most of all, allow us to share what she has to share with us, Lord, with the rest of the world. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit to protect each and every one of us here tonight. And we thank you for those that, that are new, that are joining us, Lord. We thank you for bringing them here tonight, Lord. We ask that you protect all their families. And we ask that those that have not made it back to the ministry, Lord, that you touch their heart to bring them back to be with us. We ask this through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father and the Son. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Marcus. Um, so again, welcome and, and thank you for being here. Um, mental health is very close and dear to my heart. Um, I've been in the field for 20 plus years and, um, you know, I've seen in myself too, you know, I've, I've uh, you know, as, as Jose shared, we've all gone through with some sort of, uh, situation where it's created grief in our lives, anger, sadness, uh, all those different emotions that if they go untreated, they can really take over our lives. And so I'm thankful that you're you're all here, that you're interested in learning. And through our faith and our knowledge, uh, we can uh, together overcome some of these, um, you know, thoughts and, and, and emotions that we go through. So as earlier as uh, Marcus shared, this is a new book that we will be uh, together going through, and it's called uh, Saint Diphna's Playbook, and it's a Catholic guide to finding mental health and emotional well-being. And so we're excited to to share this book because it's not, uh, as, as the author says, it's not a self-help book but it has a lot of information. Uh, and the author is a licensed marriage and family therapist that has a, a lot of knowledge and insight on uh, mental health. So many factors in our society are contributing to a greater number of people experiencing depression, anxiety, or um, some sort of mental health issue. And so the underlying cause of these mental health struggles um, is often there's different reasons, right? And the degree um, into why we experience these. And so in many cases, uh, people need medical help. And in some cases, uh, people don't. And so, so no matter the severity of the symptoms, there's, you know, there's a lot of good resources. But again, you know, I'm very thankful that you're here because together we're going to dive into uh, this series and uh, learn more and share about our experiences. Like I said, we've all uh, here, I'm sure we, we've all gone through through different situations in life that has brought us um, all those different em emotions are mixed sometimes. So, and also we're living in a time where mental health, you know, issues are, are discussed openly and there's a lot more support and information to help us overcome these symptoms of, of mental health. And so I, f I feel like in the past decades, these topics were more minimized or there was stigma around men mental health. But there, like I said, there's a lot more information now that helps us understand uh, our, our, the, our emotions and then the symptoms of, of mental health. And so also sometimes uh, religiously, some mental health was more, was like over-spiritualized. Like sometimes a prayer was the only option to to um, those different emotions. But now I think even through, through religion, it's really um, seen as not only prayer, but we also need to have knowledge. And there's all these different um, supports out there, like mental health clinicians, uh, mental health resources to to help us overcome mental health. So 
the author again you know he's a he's a licensed marriage and family therapist and he um he talked he he did a great job i think in dividing the group in different chapters and so it's a it's a different essays covering some of the most uh, common mental health concerns in in the country which cover depression anxiety trauma and so the book also addresses um, aspects of you know shared human experience including like relationship difficulties um, grief and then under each category of depression uh, the themes of losing joy and pleasure um, irritability ir irritability uh, fatigue and hopelessness are also covered in this um, in this book. So when covering anxiety, so for example, when covering anxiety, um, social anxiety, uh, OCD, which is uh, obsessive compulsive behaviors, and he also talks about which I found very interesting. I had not really ever heard about this topic, but it's called um, screw velocity and it's a disordered obsession with sin um, so that's the this is also addressed and in my introduction I'm not really going to cover dive deep into any of the different uh, contents of each chapter uh, because we're going to cover those week by week we're going to dive into them uh, week by week and we're going to chunk them also there's there's also like sub under depression, there's uh, subtopics, and so we're going to cover them one by one um, because we feel that it's so important that we not just talk about depression and then that's it. Um, there's just there's different uh, fragments within dep depression that um, that m we might need to learn about that we might need to really dive deep into uh, so we can uh, really identify if that's something that we need to heal from. And as we shared earlier. These, talk, these talks or these topics are more about us learning what is it that we need, what is it that's hindering our, our healing uh, from or for, from us feeling whole. And remember, God wants to see us in a state of wholeness and not brokenness. And so each day, you know, we have to work on becoming that that whole person that that He created us to be from the beginning. As we know, through life, things happen and we experience situations that break us in one way or the other. But ultimately, God wants to, wants to restore us back to that wholeness uh, when we were infants, when we were born and we didn't, we weren't um, exposed to, to life situations. So he, um, he also um, covers... Um, post uh, uh, PTSD. Um, he also covers um, self-harm, loneliness, um, and then, let me see, and then also relationships. So he talks about uh, feeling, he, he talks about relationship patterns of resentment, feeling stuck in life, manipulation, and abusive relationships. And then he, lastly, he also discusses, uh, talks about uh, the heartbreak, joylessness, uh, feeling powerless uh, of grief, as well as matters of substance abuse that can surface in the experience of grief. So there's there's a lot of different, uh, like I said, a lot of subtopics within the topic that uh, we will be covering uh, specifically one by one. So we can really dive into each one. And maybe you have an experience that situation but if someone that you know uh, it's about helping others as well as we learn and so there's a lot of wisdom in the author's selection of the major mental health themes of depression anxiety and trauma because as of uh, 2021 depression and anxiety are the top three most prevalent mental health diagnosis in um, the united states and then trauma is not really far from that. There's a lot of different situations that create trauma um, in ourselves. So that that is kind of side by side with, uh, with anxiety and depression. 60% of men and 50% of women experience uh, at least one trauma in their lives. So with women having a higher likelihood of experiencing 
the trauma or the traumas of, of sexual assault or, or child sexual abuse. So that's a, a little bit of, of the difference between men, men and women. So men have a higher likelihood of experiencing uh, traumas of accidents, physical assault, uh, combat, disaster, or witnessing a death or major uh, injury. Um, so then at, about, at this time, about 6% of the population has uh, PTSD. And so there's a greater wisdom in the author's efforts to integrate these common mental health concerns and life experiences with our faith. So his goal is not only to talk about these different uh, mental health uh, illnesses, but also to tie it with our faith. So in each essay or chapter, he provides us like a description of a mental health experience and then uh, and then options for help and support as it relates to uh, scripture, to the saints, and then provides a prayer for those who have, who have maybe lived these experiences. So, and, you know, with all reason, the, the, the book is called uh, St. Difna's Playbook. So he will be uh, talking about the, the saint as well. So uh, this book is highly recommended, like for, the, for those have, that have never received mental health services or people that are exploring the relationship between mental health and in our faith and learning about that. So it could also be a useful tool for those who experience shame and stigma about mental health struggles and then about receiving mental health care. And I mean, not necessarily just that, but that's, he, he identifies that in his introduction as one of, you know, his goals. So then, then he does quote um, uh, Pope St. John uh, Paul II. And he says that, um, one, he said once that only a Christian uh, anthropology enriched by the contribution of indisputable scientific data including that of modern psychology and psychiatrists can offer a complete and thus realistic uh, vision of humans. So without the field of mental health, deeply integrated into the truth of our um, Catholic faith, the vision of the human person is not complete, nor is it realistic. So in that, um, when St. Paul shares that, he is saying that, that Yes, you know that the our faith can help us through our, our through these mental health concerns, but we also need knowledge and we also need some scientific data uh, to also support with that. So he he wanted us to to also know that. So Saint Difna, just to share a little bit about her, um, for those of have that had never heard of her, and I actually had never heard of her either. Um, but she is a saint who's often invoked uh, for those with mental health issues and for uh, their caregivers and loved ones. So like I said, I had, had never heard of her, but um, she she is a saint that um, is invoked for, for mental health illness. And so he talks about, um, so the author writes and quote unquote, he said, God wills uh, that everyone be saved, not just from sin and evil, but also from depression, anxiety, past trauma, difficult relationships, heartbreak, uh, addiction, and everything else that brings us pain, suffering, and separation from the love, peace, uh, love and peace um, God so desperately wants to give us. And I truly agree with him. Like I said, uh, we we will go through things in life, and I think a few of you shared, you know, uh, about your experiences. But God truly, truly wants us to to be whole. He wants us to know uh, where, where our emotions are coming from, where uh, if we've experienced past trauma, he wants us to heal that. He wants us to know that in those moments we felt this way, but that through our faith, through his love, through knowledge, we can overcome those experiences. And so... Again, like I said, the this book is divided into different sections, and it's it's a it's a great way uh, to really understand our emotions or when we're feeling sad. What does that mean? Because I think there's a lot of misconception, a lot of misinformation about 
people feel sometimes that they should diagnose themselves. I hear people saying many, many times uh, that, oh, I'm bipolar or I'm this or I'm that and labeling the, themselves or labeling other people or diagnosing other people. And, and truly, truly, as human beings, we all are exposed to grief, to sadness, to uh, relationship situations, to uh, to different uh, experiences that lead can lead us into feeling certain a certain way that if we don't help our, our situation or really know where it's coming from and have that awareness that we can we can fall into uh, deep 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 uh, depressions or where we feel helpless, where, where we feel like we can't get out of the house. Uh, a few of you talked about anxiety, where anxiety brings that sense of fear, that sense of like, I can't even go out into the public. Uh, I have to just, I, I can't speak in front of people. I can't, There, uh, it, it creates all these fears in us and all this where our heart starts racing, right? Uh, where we can't even, uh, our, our brain just kind of, turns off and we don't even know what to say. So it it can, all these mental health disorders can, or illnesses can be very paralyzing. And God wants, he wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to go out there and, and be that parent, be that sister, that brother, that worker that the world needs, um, but we can't be paralyzed by these conditions. Uh, so Again, you know, I'm thankful that um, that you're all here um, because we will be learning together about all these different disorders and then how to uh, overcome these symptoms so we can um, be a, 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 I don't want to say a better person, but uh, just, you know, just feel better about life and, and moving forward. And so I before I end, because I think my time is almost up. Um, I did want to uh, talk about a little bit about who Difna is because I, I found that, uh, like I said, I had never heard of this saint and I, I found found it very, uh, her, I found her story very inspiring, very interesting, very tragic, um, but also very inspiring of, of what she was able to understand and be able to, to run away from and then was able, was you know, obviously died because of that, but, you know, it brings a lot of faith and hope that uh, she, she is there um, as someone that we can also invoke in and pray to. So St. Tiffna was, she was born in Ireland in the 17th uh, century, and she, her dad was a pagan king and her mom was a, a Christian. And so, when her she was a very young girl when her her mother died and then her when her mom died his dad her her dad became very he became insane about losing his wife and so he was consumed uh with finding another woman like um his wife that passed and he had all these his he had all these people look for a wife and nobody could find him somebody that was that uh, was like his his wife that passed away. So then someone just started talking to him about um, that said about him marrying his own daughter because Difna resembled uh, his his wife and looked like her and was a lot like her. So when Difna heard about the the thoughts that his, her father was having, she fled with her pastor to uh, Belgium. And so her her dad continued to look for her because he wanted to marry her. So then he heard from other people where she was at. So she went, he went to where to where she was at. And it was a, a city called Giel in, in Belgium. And so she was about 15 years old when he found her and the pastor and he the, the dad killed both of them. And so the the residents of Gill had had really taken uh, had really taken in the pastor and and Difna. So they when the, the father left, they buried both of them in a cave. And so then years later, they decided to move uh, their remains to a different a burial. And so 
Um, and when they built uh, the church in Gio, they honored it um, after St. Difna. So there's, after this, there's been many reports of St. Difna um, curing the mental, the emotional, and, and the neurological afflictions of people near uh, going that go and visit her burial site. So based on these miracles and the story of, of how she became a, a martyr, uh, she was canonized in 1247 and then named the patron saint of the mentally ill. And then she is also, um, it extends to her being the patron of incest and, incest and rape victims and then also runaways. So her feast day is uh, May 15th. And then, so when I was listening to, when I was reading about her story and really reflecting on what she might have gone through, because I'm a very visual person. I don't know if uh, any of you any here, but when I'm reading something, I was kind of visualizing her fleeing and then her death finding her in that whole situation. And then how she might have felt in that, in, in, you know, the distress that she was feeling. And so for me, I think um, she teaches us to, she can inspire us to be resilient, you know, against the evils of the world, which she did. You know, she she didn't allow her dad to marry her. She left. And then also that, you know, she had this faith that God will never forsake us despite any evil that we might suffer. And so then how I feel is that she can be like a source of uh, inspiration and devotion. And again, you know, a lot of people invoke her to when they're, when they have a, a, that need for themselves or friends or family in need of healing of mental Ill illnesses. And so I think that the saints can teach us um, to lead joyful lives. Um, they serve as role models. They also teach us that holiness means being who you are. Uh, and then uh, also they they also pray for us, I think. Uh, well, they do. They pray for us um, in heaven. So as the author said um, said earlier said earlier, he God wills us that everyone be saved from not just sin and evil, but from depression, anxiety, difficult relationships, um, heartbreak, addiction, and everything else that, that brings us pain, suffering, and separation from his love and peace. And so I really hope that uh, as we continue on with this book, that you all can um, share your experiences or or reflect on you know, if if you've ever have felt this way, uh, if you've ever felt depressed, anxiety, if you've had, uh, you know, Jose shared a little bit and and Marcus about you know their experiences and together that we can that there's there's no coincidence why God brought you here today. Whether you're viewing this on um, Instagram or possibly on YouTube or you're here that God, you know, wants us to be whole. He wants us to, to be healed. And so I really hope to, to continue to see you here, uh, to hear your experiences, uh, that we may grow together throughout the, throughout this, uh, series. And, um, ultimately, you know, God wants to transform our lives. He wants to provide that healing and that, that love that, that we all deserve. And so thank you again for being here, uh, for being part of uh, our journey today, and I hope to continue seeing you in the, in the weeks to come.